In the last video, we looked at non-concatenative morphology, at processes like ablaut, suppletion, infixis, and reduplication. In this video, we're going to look at a particular non-concatenative process, root and pattern morphology. So there's something interesting about the morphemes of English, which is kind of obvious until you really look at it. All of the the morphemes of English are continuous because all of their phonemes are in a continuous consecutive chain. For example, in the root car, you're always going to see the K first, and then right next to the K, you're going to see the A, and then right next to the A, you're going to see the R. Car. Likewise for walk. There's never, that uh, root cannot be broken, in, broken into wallock, for example and still makes sense as the root for walk. Likewise, with affixes. For example, affixes like free are always going to have the P first, and then right after the P, you're going to find the R and then the E. Infixes like freakin, you're always going to find them in the same sequence when one phoneme right next to the other. Freakin. In suffixes as well. A uh, ball. So the f the morphemes of English are continuous because their phonemes are always in a consecutive unbroken chain. Let's imagine a world where morphemes were discontinuous, where the sounds in a root didn't always happen to be didn't always have to be next to one another. This is how the verbs of Arabic word work, and really all of the grammar of Arabic works this way. So Arabic has roots that are that could be made of three consonants, for example. Uh, the root DRS is related to things about studying. So let's say this is the root, and then you had a second morpheme called the pattern, which tells you how to conjugate the verb. So for example, you have a pattern for the simple past, third person masculine, so you could build a ver uh, verb like he studied, and this morpheme is made up of a slot for the first consonant, and then the vowel A, then a slot for the second consonant, then the vowel A again, and a slot for a third consonant, and then another A. So you have the root, D, R, S, and the pattern, A, A, A. And then you interleave them, and you get Darasa, he studied. In the root, K, T, B, which has to do with writing, you can have the root and interleave it with the pattern to get kataba, he wrote. Likewise with JLS, which is a root that has to do with sitting, when you interleave these two, you get jalasa, he sat. Finally, with n za r, in, uh, which is a root that has to do with uh, seeing, watching, and so forth, when you interleave it with the past tense, you get nazara, he saw. So as you can see, both the root and the pattern appear disjointed in the word, like the, the sounds D, R, S are not next to one another in darasa, but they belong to the same morpheme, the same discontinuous morpheme. This is the way you construct words in Arabic with discontinuous morphemes. And it uh, works throughout the grammar. For example, the morpheme to tell uh, the place for something has M, A, and then slots for C1 and C2, then either an A or an I, depending on the verb, then a slot for C3, and then sometimes an A. So the verb DRS to study, I'm sorry, the root DRS, can be interleaved with the pattern for place to do something, so that you get madrasa school ktb has to do with writing and when you interleave it with place you get mac tab desk the place where you write jls majlis a sitting room somewhere where uh, where you can sit and relax when you mix it with enza r manzar a lookout or a watchtower. This also works for the pattern for the present first person singular. So I study, I write, 
I sit and I see. And the pattern is an A before the first consonant, and then the second consonant, and then an I or an U, depending on the verb, and then the third consonant. So, adrus, aktub, achlis, anzur. As you can see, the roots and the patterns interleave. They are discontinuous because the sounds in the roots and the sounds in the patterns are never next to one another, but they form a complete word. This type of morphology is called root and pattern morphology. And it is not, it, uh, it doesn't exist in a lot of language families in the world, but there are some languages that have it. For example, ancient Egyptian also had root and pattern morphology. So if you look at the hieroglyphs, they look like drawings, but they're really consonants uh, that were pretty much like our consonants. Um, it's writing in ancient, in ancient Egyptian is absolutely beautiful. If you have time, please study it because it's amazing. Most of the characters are consonants and in those consonants, we find roots. For example, we have the three letter root N, Ch, R, which means things like divinity. When you interleave that root with the pattern, consonant one, long A, Consonant two, short A, consonant three, you get nachar, God. It's a noun in the singular masculine. When you interleave it with the pattern a, a, at, you get nacharat, goddess. If you want to make the plural, the pattern would be nachurao, gods. You can also make this root and take this root and turn it into an adjective. For example, Egyptian had um, masculine and feminine adjectives, just as French, German, or Spanish. And the adjective, the masculine singular adjective, would be formed with the pattern consonant one, u, consonant two and three, e. So, nutri, divine. And for the feminine, it would be, oh, I'm sorry, it was like this, nutri, divine. And for the feminine, it would be, Nuturit, divine in the feminine. So many languages use root and pattern morphology. Uh, they all belong to the Afroasiatic family. So Amharic from Ethiopia uses it, also Hebrew and the Amazigh languages from northeastern Africa, for example, in Morocco, and Maltese in the Mediterranean are uh, notable languages that use root, root and pattern morphology. So in summary, English morphemes are continuous because their phonemes are always in a sequence and you find them in the same sequence whenever you see them in a word. But in some languages, morphemes are discontinuous. You don't see their phonemes one next to the other. We call this pattern root and pattern morphology. And in this kind of morphology, morphemes are interleaved to build words. And this is a kind of non-concatenative morphological process.